All right, thanks for the opportunity for me to speak to you. Um, like he said earlier, I'm going to be speaking on how to maximize the use of WordPress for multimedia publishing without necessarily having to rely on plugins. I'm sure I'm speaking to an enlightened audience, so I would not need to explain what a plugin is. But like you might all know, plugins are one of the biggest assets of WordPress because they extend the functionality that comes with WordPress. They allow you to do things that are not natively possible with WordPress. So um, as of this morning, when I was quickly putting this uh, slideshow together, I noticed that 16, over 16,000 plugins had been published on WordPress.org, and these plugins have been downloaded over 200 million times. But then, as nice a plug as plugins are, they have uh, potential problems for people who use them. And I'm not saying they are not good for you. I've, I've heard a lot of things this morning um, from the developer section, from the previous speaker. But yeah, plugins present problems. In terms of security, for example, it's possible to install a plugin. Maybe it wasn't developed by a competent person or there are some holes in it. It wasn't well done. So you might realize that it can create a hole in your blog and make hackers gain access or spammers gain, gain access and make them do nasty things with your website. And some plugins can also affect other plugins. You can install so many plugins and you find out that you are having problems with your website because one plugin is conflicting with another. And it can also cause uh, a problem for your hosting server. Um, I manage a web hosting company and we've had many instances whereby a customer's website runs slowly and is sluggish because of one plugin or another that they've installed and the plugin is um, consuming too much server resources. So it's making their website a little unresponsive. And another plugin, another problem from my personal experience is that you might have a good developer who develop a good plugin but for one reason or another, maybe he's very busy, he's not able to commit time and resources to improving the plugin, or because he's not being paid for it, maybe it's a free plugin for some other reason, he has to stop, he has to stop improving on the plugin. And when WordPress releases a new version of the software, maybe they might have developed a new version that has some of the functionality that the plugin is offering. So you might find out that the, the existing plugin that is doing very well right now, that is offering you the good functionality you want, might not work well with a future version of WordPress. So there are compatibility issues with relying on plugins. And sometimes because the guy who is designing or the lady who is designing this plugin doesn't have so much time to um, assist everybody individually. So the best technical support they can offer is to put up an FAQ, a frequently asked questions, so that if you have a problem, just go to the FAQ and see if your problem has been answered there. And if it has not, then maybe you are out of luck or you have to bother the, the developer. And yeah, I've explained this earlier. The plugin developer might, I've seen several instances, maybe from plugins I used, that the developer would just put up a notice. Uh, Thank you for using my plugin. It has been fun. I'm out of here, blah, blah, blah. So you are left, <laughs> you are left high and dry. And I, I even have a specific plugin on my personal blog right now. The plugin is still active, but the developer has stopped. He's, he has stopped um, improving on it. So that I'm losing out from that functionality. Now, so my personal philosophy is that I only use plugins where it is absolutely necessary. So WordPress has evolved over the years to the point whereby right now, it is possible to um, enjoy a lot of functionality without necessarily relying on plugins. And because I'm going to talk in, I'm, I'm talking about multimedia, uh, I'm only going to limit myself to that and discuss issues that have to do with publishing audio, video, and photos. Now, from the, <laughs> you'd have to permit me, from the little research I did, I could not find a way of necessarily publishing audio, audio files without relying on plugins. So there are a lot of plugins that you can rely on for, for publishing audio. Like the previous speaker said, and he gave some tips about how to select a plugin. So if you need to publish audio, you can go to uh, wordpress.org and go to the plugin section and choose uh, 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 a reputable plugin for your audio needs. Yeah. Now, before I go further, I would like to ask, is there anybody in the audience that has a blog or publishes a website based on WordPress that is primarily non-text. It could be video, it could be audio, it could be photos, but <coughs> primarily non-text. 
Is there anybody like that in the audience? <sighs> wow. <laughs> oh, yeah, someone is. Well, I do have a lot of text, but there's a lot of audio also. Okay, lots of audio, yeah. yeah I've got the same. I've, I've got predominantly text, but I've got lots of pages where, where the whole page has only got audio files and some video. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And you might all be familiar with the, with the saying that says a picture can say a thousand words. So there are times when, as a blogger or as a publisher, you want to express an opinion or you want to share some information, you want to share an experience. And instead of putting, instead of typing so much words, you can just publish a photo and then put a tagline under this photo explaining what the photo is all about, and it can save you a lot of time. So there are types of blogs that are primarily based on photos. They, they, are, not, um, they are not into text, text, text. So they are primarily based on photos such that you can go to the blog and click from one, from one post to the other, and all you'll be seeing is photos or videos only, as the case may be. So. Yeah, so as of... As of version 2.5 of WordPress, they have built in a functionality into WordPress that allows you, it's called gallery, gallery function, that allows you to publish photos, images, without having to rely on plugins in a very nice, in the best way possible. Before now, whenever uh, I'm dealing with my web design team in my company for, for, for a client's website or for a blog, we've had to rely on plugins for the photo functionality. And I always, the plugins that exist, they are usually based on JavaScript or Flash. And I usually don't like any of those. I always like it to be organic, such that each photo would have a unique URL, a unique permalink, a title, and, and all those things. But most of the plugins that existed before, before WordPress 2.5 were based on JavaScript and all that. <laughs> so the, the gallery functionality in WordPress allows you to publish photos or pictures within WordPress itself without needing to use a, 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 a plugin. So now, WordPress has an inbuilt functionality that allows you to publish photos and images. And most of the magic is based on this part of your admin area. I'm sure many of you have noticed this, and I'm sure maybe some of you have used it before now. When you are within the admin area, you click on Media, and it shows you two options, library and add new. This is the media library. This is a snapshot of my personal blog and some images I've uploaded in the past. So how this works is that it allows you to bulk upload the images or to upload them one after the other. Either way, after uploading, you can come here and edit the images. You can edit the title, the caption, the, or, some other character, or, or some other characteristics of the image. And the key thing here is to attach the image to a particular post or page. So here you find the title of a post. I think it's the last, um, or one of the recent blog posts I did on my personal blog. So once you attach it here, it would automatically pick the image from within the post itself. So to show a thumbnail, so let's say you, you have 10, posts, um, 10 images here, and you've attached all of them to a particular post, it's going to show a thumbnail or thumbnails of these images within the post itself. And if you are using a theme that is recent, I think the latest default theme from WordPress comes with this functionality as well. <coughs> if you're using a theme that supports the gallery function, you can have a specific page that's going to display a thumbnail or thumbnails of, of these images. So this is a particular um, screenshot of a particular images and the characteristics of this image that you can edit. You can edit the title, the alternate text, the text that people see when they hover on the image. You can edit the caption, the description of the image. So each of these um, specific um, fields allows you to enter different things, even though in some cases you can duplicate the text in them. And within this, this function itself, when you click on edit image, it allows you to resize, crop, um, <laughs> swivel the image, turn the image upside down and all that. Yeah, the website I was trying to show you, fortunately enough for me, I took a screenshot of it and included it in my, in my slide shots. I, 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 I thought I would be able to view the live website. Now, this is the photo gallery on the case study of this website. And the photo gallery page is just a, a PHP page, a PHP page that we just edited a few things in, in it. And we asked this page to display every post that, is, that has a photo in it. 
So that makes it a photo gallery. So these are all the pages that have a photo in them. And when you click on any of these thumbnails, it will take you to a specific, let me, let me go back a bit. So when you click on the shop for free, as an example, it will take you to another page that shows you a thumbnail. The page is much longer than this. And this is all based on WordPress itself, not a plugin. So it shows you a thumbnail of all the photos specific to that post. So let's say the name of the post is shop for free. It shows you all a thumbnail of all the images. So when you click on a specific image, this is a specific image, for example. So it now shows you the full image, and it gives you the, the name of the post and the, title, and the title of the image. So the image is under the post. So this is quite organic. If you could see the address bar, you would have seen um, gharvest.org slash shop for free slash uh, maybe the name of the image. Yeah, it's very organic and it's good for search engine optimization because um, most search engines cannot read Flash, they cannot read JavaScript, but when it's organic like this, you, they can easily detect the contents of the page that it's a photo and it has these characteristics. So I took another snapshot of the lower parts of the previous image I just show you. So you can see that in the gallery, you can go to a previous photo and you can go to a next photo. and there's also some functionality that allows you to display the data of the photo. For example, the date it was taken, the camera that was used in taking the photo, the, the location, if the camera you used allows geotagging. Yeah. So for video itself, even though I assume that WordPress is working hard to develop a, a similar system like this for videos, but for now, all you can do is to use codes that they call, they call it uh, O-Embed. That's what they call the functionality. So for popular video publishing websites, in most cases anyway, you will not have to upload a video to your own website. In most cases, you upload your video to YouTube and you call the video from YouTube to your own blog. So in most cases, most people rely on YouTube and other popular video publishing websites. So what WordPress does is that it allows you to just enter a little code in your post. I don't know if I took a snapshot of that. No, I did not. <laughs> well, I thought I would have <coughs> access to a live website. So what WordPress does is that for the popular, and they have the list of those popular websites at this URL I gave. So when you go to this URL, you find a list of these popular um, video publishing websites whereby you can just enter, you can just pick a code from their website and enter it into your publishing, into your typing page. It will allow you to publish videos from this popular website. Please give me a minute. I want to try and visit one of them. Oh. Yeah, so this is it. Um, before now, if you wanted to publish a YouTube video in a blog post using WordPress, you had to go to youtube.com and open the specific video and grab that video code they give you and try to embed it into your, into your WordPress blog post. And even before then, previous versions of WordPress, it was even more, more, more difficult than that. But now, they've developed WordPress itself such that you only, uh, you only copy, I'm looking for the code itself. You only include this URL. So when you are publishing a post, let's say you've written your title, you've written a little description of this video, you only include this URL in your WordPress post, the URL of the YouTube video itself, and WordPress would automatically detect that it's a YouTube video and they would include the player and all that so that when people are viewing your blog post, they're going to view it normally, like, like they normally would, yeah, without you having to do anything extraordinary. So this functionality they call O-Embed is compatible with the following video websites. So I'm sure these are the most popular video websites that most people use for uploading video. YouTube, Vimeo, Dailymotion, Blip TV, Flickers, both videos and images. And, and, and stuff like that. So as it is now, it's possible to do a lot, of, a lot of multimedia publishing with WordPress without necessarily having to rely on plugins uh, as explained earlier. So that's about it for my presentation. So if, I, if there are any questions, I'll be happy to take them. Thank you.